make sure my phone is silenced. <clears throat> <coughs> Um, okay. Good morning, y'all. I hope everybody slept good. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in the room. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I was really hoping we was going to be up on makeoverministry.com. I'm still wiggling, y'all. I thought I had it this morning. But, um, no. Huh. I don't think I got it like I thought I had it. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good night's rest. Come on in. Hallelujah. It has been an adventurous week on my end. Um, Y'all continue to pray my strength as we are pressing through this season. Um, I'm trying to get us up on makeoverministry.com. So, huh. All right, let's see. Ooh, when I tell y'all this technology is blessing me. But it's so beautiful because... Each season of life pushes you a little further. And the problem is that if we decide to stop growing, then we're going to miss it. And you can't decide to stop growing. You got to keep growing. You got to do what's uncomfortable. You got to do what you don't know. You got to do what, what, what it feels like is impossible. And it takes repetition. I was thinking about the word train last night. The Bible says train up a child in the way. In the way that they shall go. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. I was thinking about that. And to train means repetition. It takes patience. Whew, my God. Oh, um, I know it, child. Listen, good morning, Myra. Good morning, Kennedy. Good morning, Jewel. Jewel, I just want to give a public shout out. You have been a star student this semester during our leadership training. And I thank God for you. Um, also, Charlene, you have been a star student. And I actually sent a message. So every single person in the leadership um, group should have got a message this morning. I sent out a message uh, to everyone in the leadership group this morning um oh man i'm having an issue with this i wish my daughter was woke but she's not and she's all upstairs hmm. these little new kids honey i don't know what they got going on but the lord just made them and they just they know so much about technology how do you know all of this stuff lord please help it jesus that's all i can say is help it jesus Hmm. I think I got that in right, but I can't click OK. Nope. Oh, well, I tried, y'all. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. We'll continue to try. I was waiting on my new camera, and I finally got that. My new webcam, rather. I was waiting on that, and I finally got that. But now I can't. Hmm. I'm struggling with getting this code in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, all right. So, just so y'all know, I'm struggling too. Bless God. <laughs> just so y'all know, whatever hard thing that I'm 
If you're a part of the leadership team or you're a part of Makeover Transformation Church and Makeover Ministry, and you are like, oh, Apostle Julie is always, she's always pushing me to do this. It always seemed like it's not enough. It always seemed like it's more to do. Well, that's my life too. You're not the only one. It's always more for me to do too. It's always um, an opportunity for growth. I have moments where it's like, oh, Lord, if you don't help me, I won't get through. So these are all real things. That's what I wanted to say about that. Um, yes, save changes. These are all real things. Let's see. And I actually might have it now. I'm not sure. I think I got that key in right. Let's switch our camera. And let me try one other thing. Thank y'all for y'all's patience this morning. I do appreciate it. No, I might not be right. I think we got our camera. I don't think that's the issue. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think we're frozen, though. It's the only dilemma. Why we don't have action. It is connecting. Ooh, bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, no, it's not working. All right. Well, I tried this morning again. I'm gonna keep working at it, y'all. We're gonna get it eventually. I'm still working at it. I'm still working at it. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't renew the key. Whew. Y'all just pray my strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Because I do not feel like it. I'm glad. Um, okay. So let's hop in. I'll, I'll wiggle and wiggle with that a little bit more soon. Um, God is so faithful in everything. My best. Uh, okay. So Mara, you said you did not. You're not sure um, the leadership didn't pop up on you didn't receive a message. It should come through your email, I guess. I'm assuming. But yeah, I took time to write everyone a message in the leadership um, training group this morning. Bless God. All right. Let's do a um, let's do a um, a devotional from my book. My book, Dolls 90 Day Devotional. You can pick it up on Amazon. Um, let's do a devotional dolls, 90 day devotional. It is not, uh, just for girls. I'm the doll daughter of the living, loving savior. And so, um, this is the back of it and you can pick it up on Amazon or you can also, I, have I uploaded the e-copy? I don't think I have yet on my website, but I'll be getting that up soon. Y'all, I got so many things going on behind the scenes. Building the foundation is so important. Building the foundation is so important. So getting reestablished here in Savannah feels like everything. Um, okay, being part of the family, I mean, growing here in Savannah and starting over here in Savannah is a whole new adventure. Um, Mara, it's not on the group me. It's on the Google Classroom. It should come through Google Classroom, not group me. We don't have a group me for the leadership anymore. Everything is now on Google Classroom. But yeah, so it's it's a beautiful thing. And I think what I love about God and how he is moving that is that it keeps me humble. One, it keeps me uh, compassionate for, for those who are freshly building, because even though this is not my first rodeo, it is new ground. It is new territory. And so um, it, it still feels the same as if it was all the first time because it's all a new setting and all that good stuff. So we're going to do a devotional today and I just opened it up and it, it landed on day eight, Dolls Daily Devotional Day 8 and it's called No God and No Peace, okay? 
One of the names of God is Jehovah Shalom, which means God, our peace. In him, there is unlimited, beyond our comprehension, peace. What does that mean? Even in chaos, we can stand still and have a sound mind and mental clarity because of our because of who our faith is in. Those who don't know God don't have real peace, you know. Philippians 4 and Philippians 4, 6 through 7 in the NIV translation says, do not be anxious about anything. Worry about nothing. But in every situation, by prayer and and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Worry, stress, anxiety, and anxiety rob you of peace. Worry and peace can't exist simultaneously. They are like oil and water. And even greater, worry, stress, and anxiety are all seeds that grow into bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness, which are all sins. Unchecked, the, uh, the aftermath can be violence, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Peace is God's desire for all of his children. True peace is not determined by your external situation, but it's an assurance that comes from within. It's based upon our confident hope in God. Even in tough times, you know that it will work for your, that it will work for your good. Peace is a weapon that cuts the devil's plan short. When you face adversity with peace, he loses. The three Hebrew boys went into the fiery furnace with peace and came out with a miracle. Esther faced the king with confident peace in her heart and said, if I perish, I perish. And she did not let impeding danger stop her. She went forth and accomplished what she set out to do. True peace comes from doing the right thing with pure motives, knowing that God is in control. Let me read that one more time. True peace comes from doing the right things with pure motives and knowing God is in control. And so I think let's use that as a guard because sometimes um, you're doing a thing, but your peace is gone. So I want you to check. Um, are you doing the right thing? First of all, second of all, are your motives pure and are you trusting God's outcome knowing that God is in control of the situation? Heart check. Do you have peace in your heart in this season of your life or are you consumed with worry, doubt, or fear? Remember worry adds not a moment to your life, nor can it change the situation for the good. Prayer changes things, and it helps you to keep proper perspective even in trying times. Peace offers you a clear head to receive instruction from God and to make sound decisions. The absence of peace alters your judgment, with which births irrational decisions. Peace is a gift that comes with salvation. Isaiah 53 and 5 tells us that he was chastised or punished so that we could have peace. Know God and you will know peace. Without God, you will have no peace. Blessings and peace. <clears throat> that um, This devotional, I wrote that devotional during 2020 when uh, and I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, where Breonna Taylor had got killed. And it was riots going on all the time. And the people kept hollering, no justice, no peace. And I just kept thinking, if you know God, you know peace. Even in all of it, and something that I have learned, and I know that's just hold tight and, and gird up your loins, because something that I have learned, and even when I think about that situation, <clears throat> what we fail to uh, what we fail to um, do is take self accountability. You have to take self accountability. Some of this stuff we done got ourselves in. We want to go riot. We want to go. Us, we want to go blame it on people. We want to go do all of these things without realizing that it started with self, that I had a part to play in this. Sin will always breed simple consequences. Let's get that straight. 
We can say that the police are killing our black sons, but the truth of the matter is when Johnny is out selling drugs, see how sin, sin equals sin for outcomes? When, when Johnny's not listening to his mama and his mama done told him, Johnny don't be out there running with them boys and Johnny's out there running with them boys and then Johnny gets shot and killed, we want to blame it on the police officer. But if we stop and take a uh, examine of ourselves and realize that if Johnny was at home in his own house doing what his mama told him to do, that may not have been his outcome. We have to take um, self evaluation. We talked about yesterday or the day before we were, I was on a sabbatical yesterday. Um, but we talked about yeah, um, self examination. You got to say, you know, it's oh, honey, I went to the doctor's report and I'm just falling apart because. Oh, glory, I just falling apart because I got a cancer diagnosis. I got lung cancer. Ma'am, you have smoked cigarettes 43 years. You have bypassed the warning on the box that says may cause cancer. Warning comes before destruction, but it's easier to want to sue the cigarette company than it was to stop buying the cigarettes. We have to take self-evaluation. We have to understand sin will always breed sinful outcomes. Now, does that mean that bad things don't happen to good people? Absolutely. The, that does happen. But the Bible also tells us don't be don't be sad and feel no type of way when your own sinful ways got you this punishment. But if you are persecuted and you didn't do nothing and you didn't do nothing with the right thing, then that's something that you can say, OK, God, I just still thank you. But I want us to be mindful of what we have going on in our own lives that breed consequences. I was um, <clears throat> had a scenario that came up and it reminded me of a, a message that I heard this man of God preach. And he was talking about the Jezebel spirit and how Jezebels always have eunuchs around her. She always have has castrated men around her that that do do what she wants to do and cater to her. And he was talking about how these young men today get in relationships with these young girls who have the Jez who carry the Jezebel spirit, not because they want to all the time, but because they mama was like it and their grandma was like it, not because they want to all the time, but because maybe life pushed them in that situation. But what happens is they go out here in the streets, they get into some mess, they yank, 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 yank. Then another man, the man that they arguing with, because they are a woman, the man says something to them or puts his hands on them. Then they want to go call their eunuchs. They want to go call their castrated men. They want to go call their aunties, I mean, uncles, brothers, cousins, um, who won't give them self accountability and say, girl, if you wasn't out there running your mouth with that man, you wouldn't even have been in that situation. Why was you sitting up arguing with a man? Come on. Why was you doing? Then they, they, they have this whole thing going on. And the next thing you know, their uncle, cousin, brother, daddy goes out there. They get into a scuffle. Nowadays, people don't like to lose. And so now your daddy come up dead. Your brother come up dead. Your uncle come up dead. Your cousin come up dead because of you doing a whole lot of things and no one's saying, hey, self-accountability. If you weren't even in that place, you wouldn't even, that wouldn't even have happened. Come on, we got to get this because it's it's not going well. I'm not going out there fighting nobody's mama. Y'all, my kids go outside and get into it with somebody's mama. Why are you arguing with grown people? That's going to be the question. Don't call me to go fight nobody's mama. Child, I got things to do. See, we have to, we got to take self-evaluation and we got to have people in our life that hold us accountable. We got to have people in our life that will say, well, girl, listen, I mean, I know that's bad, but didn't your mama tell you don't date Tyrone? Well, Tyrone went outside my head, but didn't your grandma and your mama tell you Tyrone wasn't that good for you? They was telling you because they love you. And this is why you got to still say what is in your heart. When you, when your family member introduced you to somebody, they like, girl, what you think about him? Well, I don't want to say nothing because I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to hurt her feelings. It's not about hurting nobody's feelings, okay? Um, It's not about hurting nobody's feelings. It's about being honest. It's about telling the truth so that when it all boils down, they won't be able to say nobody said nothing, okay? Now, my mama, she said something. My mama said something. When I was in homosexuality, she said that woman's gone. She, 
My mom was interested. She said, them women's going to cut you up and put you in the purse they bought you. Okay, you keep on by letting them buy you all this stuff. You keep on letting them spoil you and stuff. She said, they're going to cut you up and uh, put you in the purse that they bought you and throw it, throw it over in the river. That's what she said. And they didn't do it physically, but my heart was cut. Because you cannot do sin and not reap sinful consequences. There's no good way to do sin. I know we think it is. It's like the dope dealer that's like, oh, you know, I take my money. I take the money and buy kids popsicles at the park. What? That is not good. Stop selling their mama crack and their mama can buy their own popsicles. You know, we got to take self-evaluation and stop trying to deflect. Now we got the Adam syndrome. This woman you gave me, Adam, Adam, why would you eat the fruit? I told you don't eat the fruit. Adam, what made you eat the fruit? This woman you gave me. See, it's easier to deflect than to take self-accountability. It's easier to blame it on somebody else than to look in the mirror and say, what could I have done differently? When I was in a homosexuality and the Lord told me to leave and I was being delivered and the Lord told me to leave that woman's house on a Friday night. I never forget it. I laid in that bed and I was like, I'll leave tomorrow because I'm comfortable. See, warning came before destruction. Woke up the next day. <clears throat> At that time, we was going to church on Saturdays. We went to church and, and out of nowhere, honey, I don't know what happened. Something happened. And I, next thing I know, she jumped on me and she had never put her hands on me. The whole time we was together, the six years we were together, off and on, she never put her hands on me. But God, I love you because when she took her hands off of me and I thank God I still had a life left, I fell to my knees and instantly I said, God, I'm sorry because if I would have left when you told me to leave last night, you see how this wouldn't even happen. But the but the pe people in this victim mentality, oh, I, I cannot believe she brought me out. Here. She jumped on me. She choked me. Girl, she took me and took the character to, and used me like a dish rag, baby, and wiped me across the whole table. No, you, oh, you disobey God. Disobedience has consequences. Yeah. It has consequences. And so we have to, to take a look at what we got going on. You go to the doctor's office and they say, ma'am, you know, you got to get a leg amputated because your, your sugar is too high. You've been having sugars high for 19 years. Now you got to get a leg amputated. Oh, these doctors just wanted the devil. Nope. Here we go. God, we just in here this morning. The devil, the girl, the devil is busy. No, it's not the devil is busy. It's our decisions. Is it the devil or is it your decision? Come on. I, you, y'all, if people that are around me, like I talk like this, however I talk here is how I talk in regular. You do not hear me. I don't think I really ever say, I don't think I say the devil's busy because I don't focus on the devil because we all get to choose. The Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. You get to choose moment by moment, moment by moment, who you're going to serve and don't worry. Because both kingdoms come with a paycheck. But the Bible says the wages of sin is still death. No matter what, it might not be physical death, but the wages of sin is still death. It's still spiritual death, emotional death, death of relationship. Come on. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. So I want us to be mindful of our decisions because good decisions Bring good things. Listen, y'all want to talk? Let's just be honest. So I went to the dentist about two weeks ago, okay? And I, I brush my teeth and I do all those things, but I'm not an avid flosser. I only floss if I got something in my tooth. Child, I was in that chair. Glory. <laughs> and I couldn't say the devil is busy. I couldn't say this dentist is in here trying to kill me. She was like, well, man, we got to go under the gun line because you don't floss. Oh. Oh, Jesus, God, I love your word on today. Hey, I said, ma'am, what is this called? Because it hurts and I want to tell the people about it. Come on. And you know what it reminded me of? Because I hear people say all the time, they're like, oh, woman of God, that word, you, you just, who you always got a, a sharp, tight word. It be cutting, it be cutting, it be cutting, it be cutting, it be cutting. And I didn't really understand it until I went to the dentist that day. Because I enjoy a sharp word because it keeps me straight because I understand it now. But when I was in that dentist chair, because it hadn't been done, they hadn't hadn't been flossing. And because I had, they hadn't went under the gun line, it hurt. 
It hurts when you got to for the first time. I said, oh, this is what it feels like when the people of God call me. And they say, woman of God, that word was cutting me. I didn't understand it. It hurts. And then I was so after. Yes, I was so after and after and after. Come on. And so I have to realize that this is exactly how the word of God is. It's a two-edged sword. It circumcises the flesh from the spirit. It cuts away. It digs down. It touches. The true word of God will go down and touch things that you won't touch on your own. Well, me and I read my own Bible, honey. I don't have to read the word. You know, the Holy Ghost teaches us all things. Absolutely. But the Bible also says, do not forsake your local assembly because there's going to be revelation from the preacher that you may or may not receive. See, there are things that couldn't happen at the dentist's office office sorry. There are things that couldn't happen in my bathroom that happened at the dentist's office. Come on, because of the because of the level um, of things that had gotten impacted into my gum line. And you couldn't see it with the naked eye. God, I love your word on today. And guess what was so beautiful and so blessed? She was still like, your teeth are really healthy. Your gums are really healthy. She said, but we just got to go under here and we got to remove this stuff. I said, oh, Jesus, glory to God. So it does hurt. It does hurt, but it's for our good. She was the dentist wasn't trying to hurt me. I'm not trying to hurt nobody when I'm giving them the word of God. A true man of God, woman of God is not trying to hurt you, but it's to save your life. The Bible said it is stupid to hate correction. So I couldn't go in there and be like, I hate the dentist's office. Well, that's stupid of you, ma'am, because they're trying to help you have nice teeth. Bless God. Yes, it hurts. It even makes me think of braces and retainers. The Bible says that I will make your crooked path straight. So the bottom of my teeth, I cook it just a little bit. I had a retainer when I was young. Child, that thing hurt so bad. I didn't even have braces. I just pray for y'all to get braces because I'm sure that's a whole nother kind of pain. But I just had a little retainer just to straighten out this little crookedness that I got right here. I, for one, first of all, every time I took it out, it hurt. Uh, I lost it. I couldn't keep up with it. I kept throwing it in the trash on accident because you had to take it out to eat. And I wasn't used to it. So I kept throwing it in the trash and I had to go get another one, go get another one. But also it hurt really bad. And it made me think of the that, that scripture, he'll make your crooked path straight. It hurts to straighten the teeth and your teeth got to stay in a brace. Okay. They got to stay in that brace. It hurts because they got, th your teeth are set in place. And that's how a lot of our minds are. That's how a lot of our ways are. A lot of us have been grown up in things. A lot of us have walked through uh, seasons and we were born into sin and then life shaped us. We were shaped in iniquity. And because we become hard in that place, when I had to get them retainers on, it hurt. It was causing me headaches. God, I love your word on today. My God, come on. And so we have to understand that it's just like that with the word of God. It doesn't feel good all the time. It doesn't feel wonderful all the time, but it's necessary for our teeth to be straightened, for our life to be straightened, those crooked paths to be straightened out. Come on, it's for our good. Now, at the end of the day, these little crooked teeth on the bottom, it's not hurting anything. So this is fine. It's not hurting anything. But if it was hurting something, if they're like, ma'am, you got to get this straight. You got to get these teeth straightened out on the bottom because it's affecting blah, 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 blah. Then that's something that has, then I got to deal with that. You know, then that's something I got to endure the pain. And so when we, when we realize that we have to, there are some seasons you just got to endure the straightening. It hurts. But don't avoid the dentist just because it hurts. Don't avoid the church just because it hurts. Don't avoid the word just because it hurts. Because people just come to do their job. The dentist just comes to do their job and it's for your betterment. So anyone who's like, oh, I don't go to the dentist. I just hate the dentist. I'm just not going to be going. Uh, Then I'm just not going. That, that doesn't hurt the dentist and it doesn't hurt the preacher. Okay. So let's, let's be mindful. So it is in the natural it also is in the spiritual. And as you begin to look at that thing and examine your own life, I promise you I had, I can't, I asked the lady so I could remember, but I can't remember what it was called that she said I got done. But I said, this here reminds me of the word of God because honey, it hurts, but it's for my good. Okay. It hurts, but it's for my good. So I want us to just be mindful in this season to take accountability. I say this all the time to let me talk to my parents out there because I say it to myself. I say this, do not jack up your life 
and then get mad that your kids don't want to take care of you when you old. Uh, you done drank your whole life. Cause hell your whole life. You done over ate your whole life. Then you got to get your legs cut off. You got to get your toes cut off. You got to do all these things. And then you want your grown children to stop their life and come and do all these things for you. It's not good. Thank you. It's not good. By the grace of God, some will. Some won't. So I need us to, and it's, and it's really not their responsibility. Even the Bible, when it talks about um, widows that should be on the list, it says those that have lived a godly life. If you've lived a godly life, now it's by the grace of God that the Lord will allow, because some parents that have not done right and blah, 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 and, parent, and the kids will go back and the, the heart, the Lord will soften their heart and be like, okay, I know your daddy did all this his whole life, but you go take care of your daddy. That will be some people's assignment, but that's not everyone's assignment. I can't stop doing what I got to do because you didn't want to take care of yourself. It's not good. See, we're the babies, we can't do nothing about the babies. We got to take care of the babies because they're babies. But as we grow older, this is even in my single season, as I was preparing uh, for marriage, I had to think about this, okay? The Bible says a wife is a husband's blessing for all his earthly toils. And then I had to say the blessings of the Lord add joy and no sorrow. I had to take accountability of my own life and check it on the tally system. Okay, what areas would I not be a blessing if my husband came today? So I had to say, okay, my health, I want to make sure I'm healthy. I want to make sure I'm not for myself overweight. I want to make sure that my started working on my credit. Uh, I want to make sure that the kids got some kind of obedience because men don't want to be having to deal with kids jumping up on top of their head all day long. I had to work on um, um, spiritually. I wanted to be intact. Uh, mentally, I wanted to be intact. I wanted my heart to be free. So I had to walk through seasons where my heart could be freed up for anybody that was in there. I didn't want to be bitter. I didn't want to be nasty when my husband came. So these were all seasons that I had to be purged out of. But this still comes with self-accountability. It's so easy because you can get married and be like, honey, oh my goodness, honey, my husband don't make no enough money. No, you didn't tailor down. You didn't pull back that shopping habit. Ma'am, you have 17 purses. You have one arm. You don't need you don't need 18 purses. You don't need 20 purses. You have 332 pairs of shoes. It's only 365 days in a year. Like many of these complaints that we have, if we really take self-evaluation, we can say, oh, exactly, self-discipline. Or, oh, honey, my friends, I can't hang around these people because every time I hang around them, honey, they just make me cuss. No, you want to cuss, one. And two, you keep hanging around them. It's your choice. Who is in your life? Okay. Yeah. Help us. It, it's your choice who is in your life. Amen. Well, definitely fast from Amazon then. It's so good. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I need us to, to see this because it, it really makes a difference. It makes a difference. Uh, we can have husbands that say, oh, you know, my wife... Uh, she don't do exciting things in the bedroom. Well, ma'am, sir, you sitting up looking at porn while she's at work. She don't know how to do that because them people is trained to have sex in those crazy ways. So, you know, do you do, see some of this stuff. We got to look at ourselves. Whew. OK, you said, what if, you know, there's something that is not needed um, but your partner or her husband insists on, insists on getting it. And that happens sometimes. And so I think when I think, good morning, Carrie. I just want to say I got my skirt in the mail yesterday and it is beautiful. Thank you. And it fit perfect. Um, so so uh, that was really good. So what if us what if your partner insists on getting something and you know it's not needed? Sometimes you just gotta, after you've made your peace. You just got to let them be blessed with it. And then you just got to, but I always say, I, baby, you know, I don't really think that that's what we need, but I trust your decision. And then you get to let them see it takes the pressure off of you because you said what you said and whatever, whatever happens as a result of that, then the down the ball is in that court. Okay. Many women, let me help us. If you're in your single season, you got to learn how to bring it down. You can't be arguing with men. <laughs> My God, come on. 
You you can't be arguing with men. Oh, that's a good one. Someone said they wouldn't turn out a gift from their husband. Now, let me tell y'all a cute, funny story. My kid's father, my first marriage, he had went out and bought this dress, y'all. Bless God. It was a Louis Vuitton dress. He had bought the dress. He bought the shoes, the umbrella, the scarf, and the purse. He had bought me some Cartier glasses and some Bagari perfume. All this expensive stuff honey, that I don't probably didn't pronounce wrong. Bless God. So he had it all laid out on the bed and we was going on date night. Now, when I looked at that dress and the outfit, either you wear the dress with all solid color things or you wear a solid color dress and then you could have wear all the accessories. He wanted me to put all of that on at one time. So I look, I went in the bathroom and put all them clothes on. I said, Lord, it's just it's too much. It's just it looked like you never had nothing before. So you wanted to wear it all at one time. That's what it looked like to me. A hot mess. But when I came out of the bathroom, he was like, baby, aren't you all dolled up? Because he liked that I went with it. I didn't tell him I didn't like it. I didn't tell him this is a hot mess. I didn't tell him, baby, this you just doing too much. No. Because it really wasn't that serious. Because the truth of the matter was, the only person's opinion, right, a walking billboard, yes. The only person's opinion that mattered in that moment was his. It didn't matter if the whole rest of the restaurant, baby, I could have been on the front page paper. <laughs> Come on, exactly. And that's what it was. At least he tried. See, if I shoot it down right whenever his, his expectations are highest, then... He would have felt really bad and never purchased me anything else. But once you went ahead, I wore the outfit. Then later, some time passed. And I was like, baby, you know, this outfit, this dress really looks cute if I just do all solid things. And maybe I'll wear the shoes. Oh, okay, okay, baby. I see what you're saying. See, you got to know timing. But in our single season, ladies, something else I really worked on was I, learned, I worked on submission to men in my single season. What does that mean? Because I didn't have a husband, but anytime I was around a man, no matter where, who he was, he could have been a, a, a bum on the street, no matter who he was, I learned to submit to his authority, meaning when he started speaking, I shut up. Even if I knew more, even if I was ministering to him, even if I was whatever, I would, I would be quiet and let him speak. I wouldn't talk over him. That's something we got to learn. I wouldn't talk, I wouldn't usurp the authority. No, I, I I would be quiet and let him speak so that he could get his point across so he didn't feel like that he was arguing back and forth. That was something that when my husband came along, he appreciated it because it's something you got to do. Learning to, in my single season, that's why the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Yeah. Okay. That's very, 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 very big. I promise you. And whenever they start speaking, I would just stop speaking. I would never talk over top of a man. And I would also make sure my tone is not louder than his. I'm preaching right now, but that's not how I would talk to my husband. You have to be mindful. Our, our softness is our best, biggest weapon. Our gentleness. Our gentleness. And many single women... Many single women have, have had to be the nurturer and the disciplinarian, and you've had to be all the parts. And so it forces you sometimes to be a little. And then if you listen to uh, any secular music, they always encourage in the feminist movement and so on and so forth. But that's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. And so we have to learn to be uh, free from all those cultural things that we learned in order to be a good wife, but you have to prepare. Okay. Amen. We have to, you have to prepare uh, for the season ahead of you. Many people want kids and ain't ready to be kids. Child. Oh, glory. Listen, y'all know we be at the park and we go down here at the park down here in Savannah. We pray for the people. We, we just fellowship. They're, they're family now. So we go out to the park um, and on Sunday we went and it was a little boy. This little boy is probably, I'm going to say he's one, no more than two. Okay. And as I'm sitting out there, his mom is always at the park, but this particular day, I didn't see the mother anywhere. And so I was like, oh, well, he was sitting at the table. It was a whole bunch of guys. They were sitting there shooting dice or playing cards or whatever. And so the little boy was just sitting over there with them. Next thing you know, he's all the way on the other side of the park with us. And we was on the basketball court. And next thing I know, he's just wandering the whole park. And I'm like, where is his mama? Because first I'm thinking maybe his daddy's there. And somebody said, no, nah, the park just looks after him. 
The park looks after him. What? This park has got on all four. It's a it's a block. The park is a whole block. So it's street on every side of the park. What do we mean? He's one. But because we're not there, we're not thinking we want kids or some of some people don't really want kids. They want sex. But some that really want kids, you got to prepare your life. It, you cannot keep partying and nightclubbing and drinking and smoking and doing all the things you're doing. And now you have a little one. Children are supposed to purge out that selfish nature. Yes, you want to sleep, but Johnny's hungry. Come on. So you got to wake up. And so many want the blessing. Yeah. Many want the blessing of a thing, but we don't want the character that goes along with it. Come on. And so it's so true. Uh, the, the thing about that, that's really good. Someone said kids are the ultimate sacrifice. Kids is the ultimate sacrifice. They come first. You need a lot of patience. So true. And I believe, um, yeah, I believe that um, that's why the Bible says love is patient. Because people that got kids... If you're not patient, you, you got to you got to ask God for that. You can't be yelling at your kids. You can't be cussing at them. You can't be just because you mad, you want to slap them. Just because you mad, you want to punch them. They, they don't listen like you didn't listen. That's normal. But it still takes much patience. Still takes much patience. We have to be, people want to be married. Oh, I want a husband. I want a wife. It, it still takes much patience okay it still takes much patience we got to continue all friendship takes much patience ministry takes much patience if you that's why the bible talks about that you got to be a good steward of your own house before you try to go tell other people what to do because if you can't steward the ones that you birthed then what you gonna do with the ones in the world this is why we have it takes much patience. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. It takes much patience. All of that. Yep. Even as they get older. Absolutely. Yes, God. Come on. You got to keep going back to God. It's never a place where you got it by yourself. Okay. And oh, that's good too. Somebody said this is true, but sometimes a lot of people just have them for accessories. Oh, yes. Some people just, they don't really want to raise the kids, but they want to dress them up in all the matching outfits and put them on Facebook. They want to go on family trips and, and put pretty pictures of them on Facebook. But then after the pictures taken, they cussing them out, slapping them. They're doing all the things. They ain't got no home training. They ain't raising them. They ain't telling them about God. Yeah, it, it's true. You are absolutely right. And so we have to be mindful and we have to make sure that our desire, we have to make sure that our desires, our wants, and our blessings are matched with the character because a lot of time your gift will get you in the door. This is a lot of people that get married. That gift will get them in the door. Oh, they know how all the right things to say to the woman. They know all the right things to do to the man in the beginning. But as soon as they cross that threshold, what happened to... Now, how you don't turn into a well, wait a minute? Why are you what is happening? Because you only could get in the door, but you got to be able to have the character. You can get a good job, your gift might get you in there and getting that good job, your resume might get you in there to get you a good job. But if you don't have the character to maintain, if you don't know how to be on time, if you don't know how to follow direction, come on, I'm trying to help us. If you don't know how to listen. Come on, if you don't know how to take authority, if you don't know how to take correction, you're not going to keep that job. I don't care how good your resume is. And so it is in life. And so it is in life. And so it is in life. So we have to continue to press forward, continue to take self-examinations of our life, the nooks and the cranes. We got to continue to be self-aware and work on those things that need to be worked on. Mm. That's right. So, so true. So let's be mindful. Let's be mindful. Let's be mindful of where we are in life. Let's be mindful of where we're going and where we're trying to go in life. Okay. Amen. That's so true. Amen. And this is something too. That's true. So someone said, yes, I just prayed about if I can't treat the ones I love with kindness and respect and compassion, how can I go out into the world and do that? It is so, so true. Um, it's so, so very true, but also we have to be mindful not to let people take that for, um, 
Boy, I had a sneeze, but it ain't coming up yet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh Lord. Um one second, I just use that. Lord, I lose some every morning on this desk, Jesus. And then after I go live, I find it. After I come up live, oh here it is. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, okay, all right, your comment. That's what I was saying. So, one thing that I've learned is that people will take your uh kindness for weakness, not realizing, baby, kindness is a strength, forgiveness is a strength. Come on, it's a strength that most people don't have. Most people don't carry it, but one, it's also a gift of the Holy Ghost, okay? It is because it's easier to cuss somebody out than it is to hold your peace. It is easier. Anybody can cuss somebody out, but can you hold your peace? And so let's let's never let nobody make you feel like you're weak because you're kind, because you chose to walk away, because you didn't choose to argue back and forth with them. Absolutely. Because you didn't choose to... um you know, never feel bad about being the what the world calls the bigger person. There's no, oh, he's a weak, he's a weak guy. He's a weak guy. No, he's not a weak guy. He just he has a oh, he's he has wisdom. Oh, I wish I could think of this movie that's in my mind right now. Um, I think it was called Unfaithful. I want to say it was called Unfaithful, but there was a scene in this movie where there was a husband and a wife that were out. And these gang of guys started talking about the wife and saying something. They were saying something about her. But it was a gang of them. And it was only one of her husband. And she, he was like, baby, don't pay them no man. Come on, let's get in the car. And so she's looking at him like, oh, you stupid. You wouldn't even say nothing. Ma'am, get your behind in this car. Don't nobody got to go through all of that with some fools. That's true. The Bible says be angry, but sin not. Don't nobody have to go through all of that with some fools. It doesn't matter what they say. So you want me to get into an argument with some thugs that don't have no sense and they clearly have no, no respect. So you want me to get into a fight with them. Some One of them might have a gun. I might get jumped and beat up five ways. And we call that protecting our honor. Just because they said something about you. No, get over yourself. Yeah, Temptations. Thank you. That's exactly the movie I was thinking of. Temptation. Yeah, that is exactly it. Um, that movie alone just changed my life. And it's so funny because I watched that movie in sin and I was like, woo, when the man was coming, luring hallway. I remember being in the theater like, woo, girl, honey, woo, that yes, that would have been my boob. Woo, I would have just come on, but not looking. And she had the best thing she had at home. She honestly did. She had a very good man, peaceful, comfortable. They lived a little small, little tight little house and all was well. But that's how the devil does. He comes and he lures you away. Okay. He comes and he lures you away. But in the end, whew, yeah, in the end, in the end, you. that's why I said self-examination. Because if she would have examined, wait a minute, I'm changing. Now my goodwill dress ain't good enough. Now my fuzzy hair is not good enough. Uh, that It's not good. Now you end up and your good man done gone on on. Oh, yes. You told the truth. She definitely paid the price. She definitely paid the price. And people will say, oh, well, grace of God will be with you. The grace of God will be with you if he chooses it to be. Because the Bible says he shows mercy on whom he chooses. However, we still have to be mindful that you still have consequences. My nephew said that to me the other day. He said, Amy, he said, Life either has blessings or it has consequences. And it depends on what you do. And I said, you're right. You are absolutely right. It either has blessings or it has consequences. So you have to be, you got to even learn yourself and know when you are being lured away. You have to realize Am I being lured away? You know what you know your things that you've been delivered from. So you have to be mindful. Oh yeah. You have to be mindful of, of am I being lured away? Am I being lured? If you used to be a fighter, if you used to be someone who argue and cuss people out real good, when someone starts baiting you and they going back and forth and you find yourself being going back and forth, you're being lured so that you can be pulled out of your character. Okay. When you know you was delivered from sleeping with people and Johnny tell you, just come over, we just going to talk. 
It's 12 o'clock at night. Can you just come over and pray for me? Johnny, you done missed prayer meeting all this week. We done had a Zoom call. We done had this, that, and the third. You done missed all this. And you want me to come over at 11 o'clock at night and pray for you? Now, how much prayer do you need that I got to come over your house, but I can't pray for you at home? Uh, where I'm at on my phone, where you at at your house? No, I'm being lured. Your ex start calling out of nowhere. Trying to play on all your hearts. Well, I just want you to pray for me because, you know, you're a good woman. I need a good woman in my life. No, I don't want that. No, the man shall lead. So you're already wrong. You coming from behind like a thief in the night. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on. You're being lured away. You're being lured away. You're being lured away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somebody had, had me tickled. I seen something and it said something. They boyfriend, they ex-boyfriend called him in the middle of the night and said, baby, I can't sleep. And they said, well, that's okay. The Bible says there's no rest for the weary. Good night. I said, come on in the room. You got to learn how to give people back the scripture. Yeah. You have, to, you have to learn how to give people back the scripture. And that's how you untangle. But be mindful when you're being lured away. Listen, y'all know I tell y'all my cupcake struggle. So when cupcakes and cookies and pies and food and overeating comes and it's presenting itself, you can eat all you want. Woo, be careful. I can tell myself, don't you be lured away into a sugar coma later. Don't you be lured away because you're not going to feel good when you can't fit your dress on Sunday. Don't you be lured away, come on, because you're going to have health concerns. It sounds good now. It feels good now. Seems like a good idea now. Come on. But let's be mindful. Let's be mindful of that. Let's be mindful. Good morning, everyone tuning in. Be mindful when you're being lured away. This solves, it takes self-examination. The Bible says, examine yourself. When you go shopping and you realize you got way too much stuff in the cart, you're being lured away. Wait a minute. Come on. You don't even need all that crap. Somebody help somebody. Come on. So I, I just want us to continue to be mindful of that. Okay. Because the devil wiggles in and he plays on those areas where we like to play dumb. You know, whatever you've been del delivered from, no trust and believe without a shadow of a doubt that that thing is going to come back and knock on your door. Now, right? It's really, 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 yeah, the enemy will, he will try to trick you because that's just his job. But the Bible also says the Lord will not have us ignorant to Satan's devices. And he says, whenever you are being tempted, don't say that it's of the devil. No, temptation comes from your own flesh, your own desires. That's in James. But he also says that he will give you a way of escape. And there is no temptation that is not common to men. So don't be like, but you don't understand my struggle. No, I do understand your struggle. My stepdaddy used to be, uh, he was a, uh, he was um addicted to crack. But one thing he said is, he said, I'm good. I don't have to, I'm I'm good. And I don't go down that path. But if I drink a beer, he said, it's, it starts with beer for me. And if I just say, oh, I'm just going to go to a friend's house and have beer. Child, we, we had one time we was little, we went over some friends and family's party that they was having. He had one beer. I don't know what that man went and did after that, but he ended up leaving us stranded at a park he took the car and went on a crack bench, left us stranded at the park, sir. We, that's my mama's car. How you done took mama's car and left us stranded and then came back when he did come back, beat my mama up in her own car and dragged her in the car and pulled off with the door open. I mean, this crazy stuff. You got to be mindful. You have to know your own boundaries. I just really believe that's why Joseph ran up out of his coat because Joseph was like, I was good. I was able to resist every other time this woman came at me. But this time, baby, this one right here, oh, I feel myself rising and I got to drop everything and I got to leave everything, whatever it looks like to people, whatever it sounds like to people. Oh, you doing too much. You being extreme. It don't take all that. No, you don't know what someone has been delivered from. Yeah. Amen. You don't know what it ha what someone has been delivered from and what it takes to maintain their own salvation, but you got to maintain your own because the enemy comes for your testimony. Yeah. He comes for your thou shall not list. You say you don't drink, people going to keep offering you drinks. You say you don't smoke, come on, he's going to keep offering you cigarettes. Well, you, you know, this ain't really smoking. This is called vaping. 
Okay, this is more cool, you know, it's blah, 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 blah. No, nah, baby, it's still smoking. God, I bless your name. Come on. So don't be lured away. Don't take the fool's gold, okay? Don't take the fool's gold because it will cost you way too much. Sin will always cost you more than you want to pay. Come on. Be mindful. Be mindful of the things that are being offered in this, they sound good. The enemy always comes dangling. Yeah. The enemy always comes dangling. All right. That's so true. Someone said, why did Joseph's brothers turn on him? I'm going to tell you it was the will of God that Joseph's brothers turned on him because it was for the making of where Joseph had to go. It was for the making. It broke pride out of Joseph. Come on. It, it, it prepared him for the platform. God, I bless your name. And so he had to go through what he had to go through because it showed him how faithful he was to God. It showed him what was in him. He was anointed. Let me help us. When his when his father gave him that coat of many colors, he was that coat represented every season that he was going to have to go through. That coat represents a covering to keep you warm. That coat his father gave him, it was the anointing to go through every season that he had to walk through. Many of us want the anointing, but we don't want to go through the seasons of hell that you have to go through. We call it depression. When you're not depressed, you're being pressed. But if you don't allow the pressing to do what the pressing does, then you do come out depressed. Instead of being pressed, it hurts, but you got to keep going. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me. My God, come on. It's uncomfortable, but you got to keep going. You want to just roll up in a ball like a roly poly and go over in the corner. God, I love your word on today. It would have been easy for Joseph to commit suicide. I'm talking to somebody on today. It would have been easy for Joseph to commit suicide, but he would have forfeited his blessing. And so you have to understand that you are going to go through things. You have to endure the bite. Yeah. You have to endure the bite of the heel in order to crush the serpent's head. But many of us stop at the bite because the pain hurts. Joseph could have been like, oh, I'm going to prison for a crime I didn't even commit. Y'all got me messed up. I'm just going to take my own life. And that is what the enemy wants you to do. <laughs> that is what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to stop. <laughs> He wants you to stop at the pain, but keep swimming. Keep swimming. This is the motion I want you to do. Keep swimming. Keep swimming. Because if you stop in the middle of the sea, I don't care if your arms are tired. Yeah, I'm talking to you, woman of God. Come on. I don't care if your legs are tired. I don't care if your hands are tired. Keep swimming. If you woke up this morning with breath in your body, God, I love your word on today. If you woke up this morning and the bank account was empty, so it's just the day. That's just today. You don't know what God can do by the end of the day, but the enemy wants you to give up at your place of pain. But my best encouragement is to keep swimming, is to keep going, is to keep going, is to keep going. My God, come on, feel free. You can put your question up there. Uh, keep going. It's to keep going. It's to keep going, to keep pressing, keep pursuing God because it's not over until it's over. Hmm. Not over till it's over. And, and I'm even reminded, see, some of you think that, oh, I'm just in a bad situation. But I promise you, I'm reminded of when Jezebel was up there thinking that she was in Revelation. Um, Jezebel thought she was up just doing all the wonderful things that she was doing. But the Bible says that, nope, it wasn't in Revelation. I'm sorry. No, it was in the Old Testament, Jezebel. Uh, but the, the Bible says that when Elijah called up and said, who's on the Lord's side? God, I love your word on today. Exactly. Um, wh who is on the Lord's side? Yeah, Second Kings, thank you. Um, who's on the Lord's side? Throw it down. See, it's some people that are behind you that you think are enemies. God, I love your word on today, but they are on the Lord's side. Ooh, glory. It's some people that are surrounding you, that are in your circle, that are in your workplace. My God, come on. And I'm telling you, they are on the Lord's side and they are just waiting for the signal. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. My God, come on. They are just waiting for the signal. God, I bless your name. Come on. And when that signal comes, hey, God, I love your word on today. They are going to be activated. <laughs> come on. My God. Oh, okay. All right. Bless God. So your question is, let me, let me get your question. Your question is, God wants me to talk about lukewarm Christians, but I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. 
You can't preach the gospel without hurting nobody's feelings. But at the end of the day, you rather hurt their feelings and their soul be saved. So now you're at the decision. You're in the valley of decision. You're at that place where you have to choose. Am I going to obey God or please people? Am I going to please God or please people? So my best advice is to please God. It's okay. You're going if you never this is just a part of the walk. This is just a part of the life. You got to, it is what it is. But the Bible says that when you begin to have those conversations, when you begin to have those conversations, other people, you're going to draw, you may draw back those that have strayed, strayed away. Those that have strayed away. Um, and so that's the beautiful part. Yeah. Yes, God. I love God and all his children. God is still speaking. He knows all of the nooks and crannies of our life. He has not forgotten about you. He sees you right where you are. Okay. Hallelujah. He sees you right where you are. Hallelujah. That's so good. That's a good one. Like the snake in the backyard. Will you warn your, will you warn your friends? Absolutely. So good. My son said the other day he wanted to see a snake. I said, son, why do you want to see a snake for? He didn't get to see a snake, but we sure did see a real big uh, raccoon uh, last night. Bless God. And that's so true. Absolutely. The Bible says you will be hated for his name's sake, but you have to preach the gospel anyway. So true. It is so true. You have to get in that place where you say, for God, I live and for God, I die. Because truly following Christ and doing your God assignment will cost you friendships, relationships. But the thing that I, you got, let, make peace with it in your heart. I, I've had to make peace. I used to, um, the first couple of very deep cuts, the first couple of very deep betrayals, they hurt real bad. And they honestly did. They they hurt real bad. They really put a brace around my heart where I didn't really want to love people to the full magnitude and the full standard. But now I'm in a place where I I I won't. I'm gonna love people, and if they betray me, it's a part of the call. Jesus had a Judas, so if Jesus had a Judas, you gonna have a Judas too. Okay, yeah, and that's so true. You will only be hated if you speak the truth and repentance. Yes, you're telling the truth. Um, and so. I now I don't brace myself when I love people anymore. I just love them. And if you treat me right, good. And if you don't treat me right, God is still good. And it's still got to work together for my good. Because for everyone, even though G Jesus had a Judas, he also had a Peter. And Peter loved him. Peter didn't always do right by him because Peter was still learning. And, and the Lord loved Peter too. And he still had 12 disciples that walked, 11 disciples that walked out this thing with him. Come on, they didn't always get it right. God, I love your word on today. They didn't always, they didn't always show up for prayer meeting. Bless God. Come on. But Jesus, he still loved them. But he said, I didn't, you will not say, I didn't show you the way, though. Jesus said, I still showed you the way. I still showed you the way. So don't be afraid of Judas. That's normal. Learn how to be rejected by people. Learn how to be persecuted and still loved. Learn how to still trust God. Learn how to say, God, it's for you I live and for you I die. I trust that you have the turnings of my life in your hand. Come on. Because it, nothing that happens, if we get this part, nothing that happens catches God off guard, okay? Now, let me let me remind us. So next week, yeah, next week, uh, we have our leadership. No, we don't, not our leadership. We have our divorce conference, which is going to be... Um, October 25th through the 29th, I believe. You can sign up for it on our website if you are going through a divorce, been through a divorce, um, thinking about divorce. This is not a, we're not celebrating divorce, but we are, there's a place for healing. I, I believe some people's marriages actually will be restored through this conference um, because of the information. The Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So I'm encouraging you to sign up for our, um, it's called Broken But Not Destroyed. I encourage you to sign up on our website, which is makeover, M-A-K-E-O-V-A ministry.com, makeover ministry.com. I encourage you to share it with your friends. The registration is $50. However, if you do not have the registration and you know that you need to be a part of this place of healing, all you have to do is leave us a message. We do have scholarships available. All right. So I honestly have not really advertised a lot about this because we've been on our social media fast and I've just been doing what I need to do. Okay. But we do have that coming up next week. So if you are interested, if you've been through a divorce, thinking about divorce, contemplating divorce, um, 
looking at divorce, any anything around divorce, if you know someone going through a divorce, please encourage them to join us. It will be a virtual uh, conference. It will be on Zoom. And I am expecting God to move. Many people don't have the healing place before they get into another marriage. Many people don't have the healing place and they never get into another marriage because they're under a strange doctrine that told you that you once you marry one person, you can't marry nobody else your whole life. When I'm not talking about when people done done wrong, when people done done right. I'm talking about you done been beat, abused, mistreated, mishandled. You had no other way, other way out of that, but to divorce. And then there are people teaching you that you can't marry again. The Bible says, no good thing will I withhold from those that diligently seek me and those that walk upright. And the Bible says, if the unbelieving spouse wants to leave, let them go because God desires that we live in peace and you're no longer bound. And so you, you are free to marry, but there does need to be a place of healing and a place of restoration. So I do encourage you to sign up on our website for that um, I'm so excited about it, y'all. God is doing some beautiful things. I'm in the middle of my book. I'm almost finished with it. And everyone who signs up for the conference will get a copy of my book um, when it comes out. And I'm, I'm just, it's going to be a blessing. I'm actually working on a couple of books, but this particular book is about spiritual adultery and um, emotional, mental, the effects of divorce on the family. And just it's, it's really, really a blessing. So I thank God. And it also helps me to say, God, I just thank you for the, the way you have brought my life. I didn't like it in some of the ways, some of the things I've had to go through, but I wouldn't be able to teach from the angle that I'm able to teach had I not went through the things that I went through. And so I want to say that to encourage you for whatever things you're going through in this season, don't resent what God is teaching you to be the blueprint for. Don't resent it. Don't resent it. And it doesn't matter if it's someone else. Uh, it doesn't matter how it looks to other people. Just trust God. Trust God. Trust God. And know that he is faithful and he is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. Lord, we thank you for your word on today. We thank you for you are a holy God. You're righteous. You're all knowing. You're all seeing. You're holy. You're perfect in all of your ways. We ask that you touch us again this morning. God, give us fresh strength on today, wisdom and understanding to navigate throughout our day today. Give us discernment. Help us to choose the right way, the right path. Lord, we bless you. We love you. You're good. You're perfect. You know all and you see all and nothing catches you off guard. Touch every heart today, God. Touch every mind. Wash us again, God. Wash us over again so that we may be clean. Clean us with hyssop. Lord, we bless you. We love you. You are faithful in all of your ways. A thousand may fall at our left, 10,000 at our right, but no harm shall come near our ten. We still believe that and we still stand upon your word. For you are not a man that you shall lie, nor the son of man that you shall repent. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. 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 So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with this. So definitely join us. We would love for you to join us. Um, I think it's going to be a great place of healing uh, for for all for all so join us for that so that we can see what it is that the lord has to say um about divorce the lord gave me this conference last year and um i didn't know that it would come at this particular time in my life but god is faithful so our conference is called broken but not destroyed join us so that we can uh go forward. So I love y'all. I hope we had a good time today. It's a chat. I don't even know what today is. I believe today is Friday. My days just run together anymore, but I believe today is Friday. We also are gearing up for our revival in um, Grenada, Mississippi. That will be November the 7th, 8th, and 9th. I'm so excited. I got to get the time. I got to get the time. I have to get with Takia. I don't know what time it is going to be. So I got to get with her for the time, but um. We're going to have a great time. So make sure if you are in the area, if you are within a three hour drive, come on down, come on down and enjoy uh, with us. It will be on a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday. And um, we are located here in Savannah, Georgia. We meet at they call it 38th Street Park, Wells Park 
here. That's what the signs say. Wills Park. The people said 38th Street Park, but it is on between 38th and 39th of Martin Luther King. And we meet there on Sundays at 12. And we are continuing to feed the people in the park um, daily. I haven't been there in a little bit. We've been just trying to adjust and get everything situated and settled at home and all this good stuff. But continue to pray for me. Continue to lift up my family um, as I continue to pray for you and your family. Have a great day on purpose. Be encouraged. Know that if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. Uh, blessings and peace. I'm Apostle Julia. This is the Makeover Ministry, and we will see you all next Tuesday. For you all just tune into the Makeover Ministry, we'll see you on Tuesday at um, 7 a.m. We have our leadership on Monday and we have our um, Sunday service at 12. So, amen, 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 amen. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. Well, definitely, that's beautiful. All right, y'all have a good day on purpose. Blessings and peace.